Right. Hello again. Today we're going to discuss depression and, uh, and what's going on with depression in our country today. Uh, the CDC has released back in March that March of last year of 2010, uh, two, um, excuse me, 2011 rather, that uh, one in ten adults in the United States is impacted by depression or has suffered from depression at some point. So this, of course, is a staggering amount, and I'm sure most of you can relate to having feelings of depression or sadness at some at some point in your lives. Um, and if you haven't experienced that, you're you're very lucky, and you probably know someone who has not been so lucky and who has experienced those feelings at one point. So you know the de the term depression is used rather loosely in our culture. Um, people use it, as I just did, um, from meaning anything from feeling sad and um, having a hard time to being, you know, ma having major depression and feeling uh, even suicidal. So um, that that is something to recognize. I'm going to talk a little bit about the symptoms um, that are that usually indicate depression, uh, so that you can uh, be more aware. Depression can be anything from feeling sad or overwhelmed or just generally not able to cope with life to feeling extremely anxious and worried um, sort of beyond just a normal concern but feeling excessively worried about something. Uh, one can also experience weight loss or gain, um, even insomnia or the opposite where one is wanting to sleep you know, all of the time. It can also be difficult to concentrate or to make decisions uh, even, even uh, if one has been able to do those things fairly easily in the past. And there's usually a sense of sort of hopelessness or pessimism in terms of looking forward into the future. And as I said before, feeling um, completely hopeless and suicidal, not wanting life to continue because uh, you're in so much pain is, of course, the very um, extreme example of where depression can lead. So uh, with that, I now turn it over to Dr. Burnt, who is going to discuss antidepressants and their role in depression. Thank you. Um, depression is a huge topic. Um, reams and reams of uh, um, paper has been printed um, to talk about uh, depression. Uh, it's important to, uh, to state up front that uh, nowadays with the medications that we have, uh, and many of them are very good and effective medications with low side effect profiles, um, depression has become eminently treatable. So uh, even if you're depressed, um, you should feel hopeful and positive about the eventual outcome that the depression will be resolved with uh, proper treatment. Uh, in general, the uh, studies have shown that uh, 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 positive outcomes are increased if you combine um, uh, medication with therapy. Uh, the two of them together are a very good combination that, uh, that improve outcomes over than uh, just using either one or the other uh, by itself. Um, I want to also uh, say that uh, some patients uh, come in uh, depressed, but they may have just had a loss of some sort. Somebody has died in the family, let's say, and they feel sad and uh, they are mourning and in grief. And that is not, properly speaking, a uh, um, even though it's sad and uh, depressing kind of an event, but it is not uh, grouped under depression and is therefore really not, uh, shouldn't be treated with antidepressants. Although uh, I've seen patients come in with uh, being on antidepressants when they just had a period of grief and mourning. Um, grief and mourning tends to resolve by itself. Um, the other point I wanted to make is that uh, <clears throat> patients uh, may have two uh, different versions of depression. There's a, a low energy depression and then there's an anxious depression. And in fact, uh, a lot of depression uh, follows a, a period of lengthy anxiety or stress. Um, patients become just worn out with the anxiety. It's like the Energizer Bunny 
uh, you know, whose battery kind of wears out and then people just uh, feel blue and depressed without energy and so on. Um, but many uh, patients with depression have a significant anxiety component that either precedes the onset of depression or becomes part of the ongoing depression. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, antidepressants that are available nowadays. Mm -hmm. And as I said, they are very good. They're so much better than what we used to have uh, 10 or even 20 years ago. Um, we have um, antidepressants that fall roughly into three groups. Uh, and I'm going to talk about just the modern antidepressants, not the older one that we call tricyclics and so on, but uh, the modern antidepressants that are in three groups. There's the sort of uh, middle of the road kind of antidepressant that uh, is helpful for patients that are not severely depressed and they're neither anxiously depressed or low energy depressed. And those medications are uh, things like Zoloft, Lexapro, Celexa, uh, Surzone, those kinds of antidepressants. And they, they can be useful for patients that are not severely depressed and, as I said, are neither anxious nor low energy. Now, if you have a low energy depression, you want an antidepressant that, is, um, that gives you energy, and that is a stimulant in a way. And uh, in that group are uh, two medications. One is called Effexor and the other one is Prozac. Um, I want to throw in a note of caution about Prozac. Uh, I often see Prozac being used in the elderly and that is a very um, risky thing to do because if there is uh, some issue uh, like a side effect uh, in the elderly, the Prozac stays in the system up to a month and you would then have to manage the side effect for a whole month. Uh, one is much better off with a short-acting antidepressant, energizing antidepressant like Effexor. Um, the uh, other form of depression is um, a um, anxious depression. And uh, for those patients with an anxious depression, uh, a medication like Paxil, which has a calming component or a very effective anti-anxiety component, is what should be used. I often see patients that uh, have a uh, anxious depression and somebody's put them on an energizing antidepressant which adds to the anxiety. Mm. So it's uh, uh, something that one has to keep in mind that each of these medications has its own personality or its own spectrum of effect. So it's very important to match that personality of the antidepressant to what the patient needs.